What's this? This looks kind of cool. It looks like it will fit right up here. Huh. Seems to be lighting up. But now it's off. What does this down here do? Okay, that turns it back on. Alright, enough joking around. I will show how I made this. Instead of using standard addressable LED strips to make this, I found an easier way to customize the spacing between the LEDs. This method also helped him with making the structure of the cube. It all started with the sponsor of this video, JLC PCB. The basis of this project is around custom PCBs. I went to their website, jlcpcb.com, where they are a great source for high quality, low price PCBs. To see their options, you can just get a quote. The first thing I do is upload my Gerber files. They upload and process quickly, then it shows a preview of the front and back of my design. They can make boards with one, two, four, or even six layers. My project only uses two layers. Select the number of PCBs you want them to make, the thickness, even the color. I'm choosing black. And as you can see, they have many other options to choose from. I'm leaving most of these at their defaults. If you happen to have a reflow oven, they can also make a stencil to help you apply your solder paste. I don't have one, so I don't select that option. After you select all of the options you want, click save, review your order, then proceed with the checkout process. Now that my custom PCBs have arrived, let's check them out. Oh cool, they have included an extra gift. The front side looks good, and the back does also. Now let's take a closer look. For my project, I need 12 of these strips for my LEDs, and I have all 12 in this one panel. The addressable LEDs that I'm using need capacitors for each one to work correctly. Those are going on the back of the boards. I will make a video for my second channel describing my thought process in this design. For now, enjoy the build process. I will add notes or comments where needed. Before connecting the 12 boards together, I need to discuss the layout. I drew out this diagram to help me plan the connections. I numbered all of the boards, and the arrows in the diagram match the flow of the data connections. The data is input at 1, then goes to 2, then 3, then 4. The diagram shows 5 twice, but they are really the same board. The same goes for 6 and all of the rest. 
But now at 7, notice the squiggly lines. At 7 it comes to a dead end, so I'll add a wire to bring the signal back over to 8. Then to 9. And then 10. Here we have another dead end, so I will add another wire to bring it back to 11. After 11, there isn't a direct connection to 12, so I'll add another wire to bypass 2 to get me from 11 to 12, and that's the end of the data path. Overall, I will be adding 3 bypass wires with the boards. I will be getting the power and the data signal into the box with thumbtacks soldered to wires. I will also be adding thumbtacks to all of the corners so that it doesn't look weird with only three random thumbtacks. They will be placed about one quarter inch in from each corner. I will be cutting short the point for all of the thumbtacks except for the three that I need for the connections. For those three, I will tin with solder. Then after I put them in place, I will bend the points and solder the wires to them. After the glue sets for the first half, open it up and hot glue the wires into the corners of the half cube. Now I'm ready to solder these wires to the boards. The green one needs to go to the data input of board 1. The red can go to any positive connection. And the white can go to any negative connection. Make sure to not mix these up. With these wires connected, I'm ready to glue all of the sides into place.
I'm not going to go into very much detail about the wooden base for now. I plan on making a separate video on that because I want to rebuild it. Please leave a comment on design elements you would like to see in an upgraded base. Thank you for watching my video. I was just barely able to squeeze it in before the end of 2019. This was my favorite project of the entire year and I'm looking forward to the videos that I have planned for 2020. I want to thank all of my subscribers for subscribing and I really appreciate all of the comments and feedback that I have received on each of my videos. I want to mention that I have a second channel where I upload random things and sometimes they are supplementary to the project videos that I upload here. If you like the videos I post here, maybe you will like my second channel too. I have a link to there in the description. Again, thanks for watching, and enjoy the rest of this video.